In this lesson we will discuss semiconductor principles. Resistances, inductances, and capacitance are termed passive components. Devices which react to applied signals and produce changes in circuit conditions are known as active components and are called semiconductors or solid state devices. Semiconductor devices can be divided into three broad classes, diodes, transistors, and integrated circuits, or ICs. Integrated circuits can, in turn, be classified as linear or digital. Most materials can be considered to be either conductors or insulators. A conductor allows the electrical current to pass through it, and an insulator blocks the current entirely. However, some materials have a moderate resistance, too high to be a good conductor and too low to serve as an insulator. Such substances are called semiconductors. Two of the most commonly used semiconductor materials are germanium and silicon. In the atoms of both these materials, the outermost shell is incomplete and contains four electrons. The valence of these two elements is four. Ordinarily, each of the valence electrons in germanium or silicon pairs off with one of the four valence electrons of a neighboring atom. The atoms are linked by sharing pairs of electrons. The force holding these shared electrons together is called a covalent bond. The sharing is illustrated in the figure shown. The covalent bond requires a significant amount of energy to release the valence electrons from the bond. The values are 0.7 volts for germanium and 1.1 volt for silicon. The energy corresponding to these voltages is not obtained from the thermal agitation of atoms at room, normal room temperature. As a result, there are few free electrons in silicon or germanium and they are essentially insulators. However, the conductivity of silicon or germanium can be increased by the addition of other materials. This controlled process is known as doping. An intrinsic crystal is one that contains no impurities. We know that electrons in an atom exist only in specific energy levels or bands. Each shell around the nucleus of an atom represents a certain energy band and is separated from neighboring shells by energy gaps in which no electrons are present. This is illustrated in the figure shown for an unexcited silicon atom. This means there is no ex external energy such as heat present. This condition can only occur at zero degrees Kelvin, absolute zero. An intrinsic silicon crystal derives thermal energy or heat at room temperature from the surrounding air, thus enabling some valence electrons to gain sufficient energy to jump the gap between the two bands and arrive at the conduction band, thus becoming free electrons. Free electrons are called conduction electrons. When an electron jumps to the conduction band, it leaves a hole, or a vacancy, in the valence band. For every electron elevated to the conduction band, a hole is left in the valence band, forming an electron-hole pair. When an electron in the conduction band loses energy and falls back to the valence band, recombination occurs. On application of a voltage across a piece of intrinsic silicon, the thermally generated electrons in the conduction band which move freely in the crystal, are now attracted towards the positive end. This movement of free electrons constitutes an electron current in a semiconductor. At the valence band where holes exist, the remaining electrons are attached to the atoms. However, a valence electron can move to a neighboring hole and consequently leave a hole in its former position with little change of energy. This is if a hole has moved from one spot to another, constituting a hole current. Doping of a semiconductor is a process consisting of making the atoms of a specific material take the place of some atoms of the original material in the crystalline structure. This material being added is called a substitutional impurity. The concentration of the impurity atoms is extremely small, such that the material retains its original characteristics. A gas containing the impurity is diffused through a chamber in which pure silicon or germanium crystals are placed. Diffusion occurs at a high temperature and the impurity atoms displace some of the original atoms in the crystal. Common impurities used to dope silicon and germanium are phosphorus and arsenic. Both are pentavalent elements with valence 5, that is their outermost orbits contain 5 electrons. Four of these electrons are required to pair off with the four electrons of germanium. Thus, there is one extra electron left for each atom of impurity introduced, and these extra electrons drift through the crystal. Since a phosphorus or arsenic atom donates a free electron to the material, they are known as donor impurities. The semiconductor now has a surplus of negative electrons and is called an n-type semiconductor. By controlling the concentration of the impurity diffused into the silicon or germanium crystal, the conductivity of the material can be controlled. 
The electrons are called the major type carriers in the n-type material. Holes in the n-type material are called the minority carriers. The arsenic dope crystal, germanium, is illustrated in the figure. When a trivalent element such as boron or indium takes the place of an atom in a silicon or germanium crystal, the three valence electrons, that is, there are three electrons in the outermost shell of boron or indium, are not sufficient to provide the bonding, and as a result there is a vacancy. This vacancy is called a hole. It can be said that the hole moves freely just like an electron. However, the movement of a hole is like a positively charged carrier. The trivalent impurity is called an acceptor, since to complete the covalent band it has to borrow an electron from some other atom. The semiconductor possesses an excess of positive charged carriers of current or holes and is termed a p-type semiconductor. This is illustrated in the figure shown. In practical electronic components, a slab of p-type semiconductors combined with a slab of n-type semiconductor. The point at which the different types of semiconductors are joined is called the p-n junction. Since the p and the n regions have opposite charges, there is a tendency for electrons to migrate from the n zone to the p zone and holes to migrate from the p zone to the n zone. This results in a cancellation of charges in the region of the junction, forming what is known as a depletion layer. This layer, which contains no free electrons or holes, acts as a barrier between the p-zone and the n-zone, preventing any further migration of holes or electrons. In effect, the barrier or depletion layer sets up a potential difference between the two regions, and the device remains in a stable state until an external voltage is applied to it. This potential difference is called the barrier potential. The illustration shows what happens when a positive external voltage is applied to the device. The positive side of the source voltage is connected to the p-zone. Given that the voltage is sufficiently high to overcome the potential difference set up in the construction of the device, which may be a few tenths of a volt, it will repel holes in the p-zone towards the n-zone and attract electrons in the n-zone to the p-zone. As a result, the barrier or depletion layer will disappear and current will flow in the device. This method of voltage application is called the forward bias. If, as in the figure shown, the applied voltage is reversed, the opposite effect takes place, that is, the depletion layer increases, thus building up a higher potential in the device opposing the external voltage. The back voltage developed is equal to the applied voltage and hence no current flows. Voltage applied in this manner is termed negative or reverse bias. This type of device is called a semiconductor diode. When connected in forward bias, it acts as a conductor, and when reverse biased, it acts as an insulator. A junction diode is nothing but a PN junction enclosed in a protective glass, plastic, or metal housing. The current voltage characteristics of a diode are shown in the illustration. When the voltage V is positive, the diode is forward biased, and at room temperature, the relationship between current I and voltage V is as shown in the equation where I sub zero is the reverse saturation current in the milliamp range when the voltage V is negative. The diode is reverse biased and there is a small current in the reverse direction. The reverse current becomes a constant and persists as minus I sub zero until the reverse voltage becomes large enough to cause a breakdown of the junction.